Hi friends, welcome to Direct Impact Broadcasting. The network of growth and transformation presents SOS for Leaders, where your host, Taiwana Wilson, will be sharing leadership and personal growth strategies. Let's jump right in. Welcome to SOS for Leaders. I am your leadership mentor and host, Taiwana Wilson. For those of you who don't know me, I help professionals unleash their star power by growing their leadership so that they can stand out, get promoted, and get paid in their careers. Today, we will be wrapping up our series on imperfection. I hope you have enjoyed this series. If you have missed any part of it, you can go back and check out previous episodes on directimpactbroadcasting.com. If this is your first time tuning into the show, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate you landing on the show and I hope you can find some practical tidbits that you can use in both your personal and professional life. If you are a returning listener, thank you so much for continuing to listen to the show. In either way, I hope you can do me a favor and share out this podcast to those in your network. The message may not be for you, but it could be for somebody who you are connected with. So let's jump right into today's episode. We are going to talk about some steps so that you can defeat perfectionism once and for all. So we talked about uh, some questions you can ask yourself if you might be a perfectionist. We also talked about perfection and leadership as well as in the workplace. And we're going to talk today about some steps to defeating the perfectionist ideas that you might have. We all have moments where we fall into perfectionism. For some of us, this might happen kind of often. For others, it's reserved to those special occasions where we might have a project where we can't rest until we get it right. While occasional super attention to detail is okay, it's when we make perfectionism a way of life where it becomes a bit of a problem for us. Those are the times where we finally need to take charge of our lives and learn how to let go. Ralph Marston says you were born to be real, not to be perfect. You are here to be you, not to live someone else's life. And I think that's a good quote that will set us up for what we will be talking about today in our steps to defeating the perfectionist tendencies that we might have. So let's start at the core. Why are you so wrapped up in perfectionism? Are you truly trying to become a better person somehow? Or are you just trying to impress someone else or meet expectations from those around you? Neither of these reasons, the latter reasons, are very healthy and both need to be addressed. So start at the core of your being of why you have these perfectionist issues. And is it because you truly want to be better or is it because you're trying to live up to some standard or some idea that somebody else have? You can also drop the should. So this will be step two. The moment you start using a word in a conversation, especially regarding your action, you're already driving yourself crazy. Think about it. When you are saying stuff like, I should work out today, now you're already driving yourself crazy on if you're gonna do it or if you're not gonna do it. I should eat better. Okay, again, you're driving yourself crazy. I should get back in school. So these are things that are already setting yourself up to be driving yourself crazy. Remind yourself, you don't need validation from anyone. You're good just by being you. So think about, you know, when are you using that word? I should, I should, I should, I should. I should work out. Is it that, are you saying that because you feel like somebody else want to hear that? Or because you really do feel for yourself that you want, that you want to work out? 
The third step in kind of defeating our perfectionist tendencies is rewrite the script. What are you telling yourself as you throw yourself into perfectionism? Do you think this is a path to success or do you have other unrealistic expectations of the outcome? Here's where you switch up your self-talk to get out of any negative spaces and unrealistic outcomes. So the whole limiting beliefs, rewriting the script that you're telling yourself. This script could be something like, I can't lose weight because this. I can't go to the gym because this. I can't move into leadership because this. So rewrite the script that you keep telling yourself because that could be throwing you into perfectionist tendencies. Step, the next step would be drop the comparisons. When you compare, you never win when you compare. Speaking of self-talk, just who are you holding up as role models? Has this too become unhealthy going from, I want to be more like them to why can't I have everything they do? Wouldn't it be better to feel like you could celebrate where you are right now and all the effort you've been putting into things? So think about how and if you are comparing yourself to somebody. Everybody's journey is different. And I know, and I use the fit, health and fitness space because that's in an area where people tend to compare themselves. And they like, well, I see such and such and she's losing a bunch of weight and she's doing this particular diet. Then, you know, why can't I? Or I want to be more like them. Is it you want to be more like them with their motivation and their commitment? Or I want to be more like them. Or why can't I be like them and losing weight and I'm going to do what they did and I should be able to lose the same weight. And that's not always true. So comparing yourself, what you see, you're trying to compare yourself to what you see on the outside and you really have no idea what somebody is doing to get to where they are. It's the whole iceberg effect. So when you think about an iceberg, you see what you see on the top of the iceberg. You know, you in the workplace, you could be seeing somebody get promoted. But what you don't see is how they are growing themselves daily, how they are reading books, how they are investing in mentorship, how they have positive role models, how they are active in the community, how they are putting in you know, extra hours building relationships. All you see is that they got promoted. You don't see what's happening under the surface. It, the same thing could be with your health and fitness. You see somebody losing a bunch of weight. But what you don't see is the mindset shift that's happening under the iceberg of what they had to do to start losing the weight, how they view food. You don't know if they're meal prepping. You don't know if, you know, they've had to undergo therapy to be able to look at food a different way. You don't, there's a lot of things that could be happening that you don't know. So don't compare, drop the comparisons. And the last step would be show some mercy. Perfection never allows for excuses. If you can't succeed, you're automatically a failure. And by chasing imperfection, you learn the value of self-forgiveness and the ability to let go of your mistakes in favor of embracing the lessons you can learn from them. So the steps that we talked about today will help you defeat perfectionism. So, you know, step one, start at your core. Why are you so wrapped up in perfectionism? Step two, drop the should. Step three, rewrite your script of the, what you're telling yourself, that negative self-talk, the limiting beliefs. Step four, drop the comparisons. You can't compare yourself to something or somebody that you don't even see everything that's going on. And then step five, show some mercy to yourself. Perfection never allows for excuses. And so it, when you have that, it means that even when you do reach the goal, if you don't reach it exactly how you thought you would reach it, 
then you don't view it as true success. And you wouldn't think these steps are also very important at first glance. After all, is chasing imperfection worthwhile, you might even think. And the answer to that is yes. Perfection is what pulls us away from others and gets us so tangled up inside with worry and stress about getting things right. We negatively, unfortunately, impact our mental and physical health. So when you think about this and keep this in mind, isn't it time to let go and enjoy life? I hope you have enjoyed this series on perfectionism and chasing imperfection and really just letting it go and understanding that nobody's perfect. Imperfection is a part of our life. It's in part is a part of the process. And so I thank you for listening to the series and listening to this podcast. If you could share it out would be awesome. Share it out to anybody who might be uh, struggling with perfectionism issues and overcoming perfection, share this podcast out with them and tune in to the next show. You don't want to miss these bite-sized nuggets that you can use in both your personal and professional life. So thank you again. And until the next show, I hope you have an amazing week. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of SOS for Leaders, where Taiwana shared nuggets of wisdom that you can use to win in life. Follow her on Facebook, Instagram, and connect on LinkedIn. And remember, the secrets of success in your life resides inside of you. When you know what your strengths are, you can utilize them to live an impactful and influential life.